party people! Welcome once again to the Party of One podcast, the actual play RPG podcast where the gaming table is always set for two. I'm your host as always, Jeff Stormer, and this week on the show, I am joined by Eric Silver for a game of Clear Eyes, Full Hearts. Clear Eyes, Full Hearts, designed by Eric Silver and Misha Stanton, is a game about football. Specifically, it is a game about high school football a la Friday Night Lights. It is a game about teenage memories, drama, the the bright lights and the big colors and the even bigger emotions that come with that once in a lifetime experience of a high school football team. Quite simply put, uh, this game rules. I adore this game. I had so much fun playing it. This was such a delight. It hit all of the emotional beats that I wanted it to hit in the best possible way. I really think you're going to love listening to it. Uh, you can find more information about Clear Eyes Full Hearts in the show notes. Now, in addition to being one of the designers of Clear Eyes Full Hearts, Eric is also the Dungeon Master for the Join the Party podcast, a collaborative storytelling and role-playing podcast dedicated to having fun, producing great audio, and sharing their love of games. It is truly, I say this a lot, and that's partially because I listen to and enjoy a lot of actual play, one of the best actual play podcasts on the scene. If you enjoy actual play, and I'm guessing based on the fact that you're listening to this audio that I am saying into a microphone right now, you probably do, or at least you think you might, you owe it to yourself to check out Join the Party. It is astoundingly good. It is doing things uh, that I think are really impressive and awe-inspiring, and I cannot recommend it enough. You can find more information about Join the Party at jointhepartypod.com. Now, Two quick things before we dive in. One, if you want to hear more from Eric and I after this episode, and I think you probably do because I think we have a lot of fun chatting together, I think we have a pretty good chemistry, you can head over to patreon.com slash jeffstormer later this week. We'll be dropping some exclusive Patreon audio, an extra bonus discussion where Eric and I talk about the world and the history of actual play as two people who have been around it for a very long time. Uh, it was a really cool and fun and interesting conversation. I think you'll really enjoy listening to it. That will be available to all Patreon backers at $1 or more. And Patreon backers also get early access to episodes. And they get, you know, uh, they help me pay for stuff like hosting costs and equipment fees and guest payments and all of those kind of things that make the show run as well as the games that I design and all that other kind of cool stuff. If any of that interests you, again, that's patreon.com slash Jeff Stormer. One more thing before we dive in, this episode of Party of One is brought to you by Boldly Go. Boldly Go, currently on Kickstarter, is a Star Trek-inspired, optimistic science fiction role-playing game about discovery, adventure, and teamwork. It is a game about space exploration in which the players design and customize their own ship, their own NPC crews, and then go out and do space stuff. Um, there is also a thematically appropriate adventure generator in the back of the book that allows GMs to create their own Star Trek-style adventures uh, with, with entries like similar to the plot of Moby Dick, which is... As you know, I'm pro you might know this, that I'm someone who deeply loves a good random table, and that's a good random table entry. I really enjoy that. And also, I'll just say it, I feel like the world probably needs more good optimistic science fiction and more optimistic fiction storytelling right now. I, I think that is something that is, you know, I've talked a lot in this podcast about the, the power and the sort of intimate nature of role-playing games, and I think the ability to share in something kind of hopeful and energetic and positive is really kind of transformative and radical in a world that kind of doesn't want you to feel that, and so I feel like this is a, a good and special game that I highly recommend you checking out because I think it is so well worth your time. Boldly Go is currently on Kickstarter. You can find a link to that in the show notes. It would really mean a lot to me if you went backed it, made it a reality. It's very close at this point. It's about $5,000 of its $7,000 goal. I feel like you can, I feel like we can make that happen. You can find a link to the Boldly Go Kickstarter in the show notes. And with that, let's go ahead and throw it over to me in the past so that he can get started with the show. Take it past me. Thanks, future me. This week, I am so, so excited to be sitting down with Eric Silver. Eric, thanks so much for coming on Party of One. I am so happy to be here, Clear Eyes Full Heart podcast. So, real quick, before we dive in, <laughs> um, why don't you take a moment? <laughs> See, I'm just going to roll past it. I'm just going to roll past That's it. That's fine. That's fine by me. Um, real quick, before we dive into what is a game that I have been looking forward to for, uh, honestly, since you, like, mentioned, you offhandedly mentioned it to me. You were like, hey, I've got this game. I don't know if you want to play it. And, like, that was the moment in the back of my mind. I was like, yes. Yes, we will do this. 
this is what will happen. Um, <laughs> so real quick, before we dive in, why don't you take a moment and introduce the game that we're playing this week, as well as anything else that you've got going on that you might want them to know about. Absol- them being the audience who I did not say that, despite the fact that I've said that line hundreds of times. That's fine. They're just like ambiently out there. They're in the shadows as the audience. We are going yes. to play the game Clear Eyes, Full Hearts. It is a GM-less high school sports tabletop RPG. It was written by me and Misha Stanton. Hi, Misha. I hope you're out there, and I hope that you like listening to my voice. And the fact that you didn't have to edit this episode will fill you with joy. Um, so yeah, we're going to play through like a Friday Night Lights style season. We're going to make some characters feel some drama. It's going to be wonderful. But when I'm not making this game on a whim with my good friend Misha, I am the dungeon master of the game. Uh, I am the dungeon master of Join the Party, a fifth edition Dungeon Dragons podcast uh, focused on accessibility, uh, storytelling, and sounding good for yours. Uh, we're currently in our second campaign, which is a modern powered game, even though we're still using the bones of D&D, we're decoupling it from high fantasy, and uh, I'm having a lot of fun DMing it and running it and thinking about this world. The world is, um, it's if an upstate New York town uh, got turned into a metropolis the size of Portland because of like a radioactive explosion. And it, still, of course it creates a- powers. <laughs> It's a good pitch. Honestly, like, it's a solid pitch. It's a winning pitch. You've said this to, these words to me, and I went, yeah, all right. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> it's expressing all my favorite things, podcasting uh, superheroes in upstate New York. So it's really just, like, an excuse for me to do all of my favorite things. Honestly, uh, swap out upstate New York for Philadelphia, and we're on exactly the same page. So oh, I my God. It. Of course you're from Philadelphia. I find myself attracting so many people from that area, like, all through college and now. Just like, oh, 76ers fan? Yeah, don't, you're, you run with me. It's fine. Yeah, do you got, don't, don't, don't call me out like this on my own podcast, okay? <laughs> Look, my love, I trust the process because the process works, all right? Exactly. <laughs> oh, no. I don't want to diverge too much. Let's talk about a different sport. Um, all right, you want to play Clear Eyes? I do want to play. I, we, I mean, look, look, we could talk about football. I'm not going to be happy to talk about football because the Eagles are in season, but we'll talk about Clear Eyes Full Hearts instead. <laughs> Absolutely. So, I mean, playing a game like everyone who loves Friday Night Lights know it's not really about the football. It's about the drama. And we wanted to right. create a game that was like this. So it's an inspired by Friday Night Lights, high school, teenage memories, sports anime, and just drama. You make friends, you lose friends, you fight, you kiss, and sometimes you play football. Um, so yeah, I, I'm ready to play if you want me to do the introduction. I'm extremely ready to play. Read, read, me, that, read me that intro. Absolutely. This is your year. The seniors might have said that last year, but they had no idea what they were talking about. This year, this team, right here, you're going to make it. And you're going to league finals, then states, then regionals, and you're winning it all. And now we all, we we do chest bumps and we hit each other on the shoulder pads and we run out there. That's me getting hype. Yeah. Hype. (laughs) Absolutely. So to start, we're going to choose our favorite Explosions in the Sky album. We're going to play that on a loop. Just imagine one. Uh, Just imagine your listener, your favorite album is playing on a loop. If, it could even be one song, like Your Hand and Mine is just playing all the way through. Yeah. That's important. Um, we've each got three six-sided dice. We've got a whiteboard. Um, so we're going to now make our characters. We're going to make who we are on the team. We're going to make who we are in school. We're going we're gonna to make some drama. And then we are going to uh, flesh out, like, who our school is. Yeah. So I've got my three dice. I'm going to roll 3d6. First for a position. I have rolled a wide receiver, who is the class clown. Nice. That is appropriate, as I was, in fact, the class clown. And I have rolled, uh, that has problems with illegal substances. So we made that very loose. So this doesn't have to necessarily be drugs. It can Mm -hmm. be, well, it can be drugs or whatever you decide to be. It could be steroids. It could be, I don't know, anything that's, anything that's illegal that's a thing. Um, I am going to say, um, as I am the class clown, I think I would like it to be, I'm going to throw out, I'm thinking this through, I would love to be wrapped up in a cryptocurrency mining scheme. Amazing. Perfect. That is my, that is my illegal substance is Bitcoin. 
that's my illegal substance. That's great. Listen, if it was on billions, it works in tabletop RPGs. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. I, I I am I am wrapped up. I am deep in a cryptocurrency mining scheme. Incredible. All right, I'm gonna and I I play it off as a joke a lot. Like I like I am a, I am a jokey person. I play it off as a joke, but like. I am very I am I am in debt to very serious people because I I am trading Bitcoin. And like maybe you have like server you have like server farms all over the town that you're like, hey, can I just put this here? Is that okay? Because I'm so, on the football team, so it's fine. So what has happened is like um I think last episode, what happened is like we finally saw my character's apartment or like their my my character's house. And like my like there was a long like family dinner where, you know, I was being jokey, but I was visibly distressed. And then I finally went into my room and it is like hoarders level, like packed with servers. Oh, my. And God. it's just packed with all these things. And like my, literally my space is being consumed by by this by this mining scheme that I've filled my bedroom with. Because it's the only space that is uniquely mine. It's the only space that I can like I can house these things in, and I I, I have to keep keep mining because it's because it's the only way that I'm going to dig myself out. I like this a lot. I think that there's something about that you're if someone needs money for something, you're always like, yeah, I got it. Just like give me a few days. And do you have a Venmo? Oh, I love I genuinely love that. Like, that's why I got into it. If I'm like a jovial, friendly person and it's not even necessarily I think I'm not I think I'm not in debt. I think I don't like, oh, like somebody money that's going to like show up with like a tire iron. I think it's just that like every time I'm almost out, there's somebody else that like needs a couple needs like a hundred bucks. I like and that I keep. Lot. I keep being it's exactly like you said. I keep being like, I'll get it to you in a couple days. Like I got you covered. I'm not gonna let anybody on my team down, which means that I got to keep running this. I got to keep running this server mine uh, or this server farm out of my bedroom for a couple more days. It's like uh, you don't need to know what this program is. Just download it, and I'll get you 500 bucks in like yeah. three days. It's fine. I I got you covered. Yeah, I love that. That's so. We haven't had, like, such an altruistically good person whenever we play this game, so that's very nice. And I think, like, I think that, that the danger of it is that, like, I keep coming across people who are very obviously using it for ill, right? Like, people are very obviously like, I need to burn, I need to burn $2,000 through cryptocurrency. You need to not ask where this money comes from. And, like, I'm getting more and more wrapped up in that part of it because I'm just like, if I take this money, I can, I can, I can bail out Johnny's family farm. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I think that's also giving us a few like setting ideas. Make maybe mm -hmm. money is scarce in some ways. Mm -hmm. Like we don't need necessarily like if we did get a, a wrong side of the tracks person. Like every this might be more of like a traditional Friday Night Lights thing where it's like the only thing in this town is this one industry in football. Yeah. That could be. I really, I like, I like that. I like that energy. That to me is very football. That's also the town that I grew up in. Like that is my own experience. Yeah. Um, our football team wasn't good. We did in fact have one season where we didn't win a game, mm. but it was important to us. Yes. I think that there's something and like we can do stay. we're jumping ahead a little bit, but there is like some places in Pennsylvania, even if it's not Texas. Or Florida, or um, yeah. some parts of California. Well, that's totally true. Um, I, I think that to <laughs> this is revealing things about me and you. Like if we were doing the song "Allentown" by Billy Joel, mm -hmm. it's it's that town that he believes exists somewhere in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna restrain myself from calling our town Allentown, but I think it'll go there. Um, I'm gonna roll for me. I mean, I've been to actual Allentown, <laughs> so it's gonna be hard for me not to just get, think that it's actual Allentown. That's in your head. It's Allentown, but we're gonna call it something else. It's like this is Gotham. It's not New York City. It's yeah. Gotham, <laughs> but it's for Allentown. You know the song from the Billy Joel. Yeah, you know, like the song Alan's Town, <laughs> where he pretended to be a metal worker. You know that song? Whatever, whatever, whatever town the song Alan Town is about, whatever place that might be. <laughs> all right, I rolled all ones, so okay. Uh, forgive me for being a straightforward traditionalist, but that makes me a quarterback who is the golden ch child, but also wants more than football. 
You know what? The, the the show needed a star character, and sometimes <laughs> sometimes the star character is not the most interesting character. It's, you know, I could have gotten strong and silent, which would just been like, look at this good man. He's 17 <laughs> and a good man. <laughs> he's, he's a strong man and a family man. Yeah, he's a family man. He's like teachers looking at him. He's like, that boy is 17 and has one girlfriend, but he's a good man. He's going to grow up to be a good man and stay one. It turns out, it turns out that our our town is literally Smallville, and it just turns out that we're just an episode somewhere in the early seasons, just dropped in there. Yeah, no one knows. He doesn't have superpowers yet. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I think, I wonder what my more than football is going to be. I think that might reveal itself as we go through. Yeah, I think that'll come up in play. Yeah. So let's do um, our Clear Eyes Full Heart stat. So we hacked this a little bit from... Uh, lasers and feelings. Mm -hmm. This is the stat that you use just while playing football. So if you are closer to one, you are better at clear eyes, which is planning, staying calm in tight situations, remembering what you did at practice, the analytical side. If you're closer to six, you are better at full heart, your raw strength relying on talent, being impulsive, feelings. So you're more uh, feelings part of your brain. I feel like I am analytical because I am mm -hmm. the quarterback and I'm good at this. So I need to remember... There is a part of like me studying a lot, and I feel like I need to be very clear eyes. I'm gonna go with, th I'm gonna go with three. I'm gonna go with four because I feel the exact opposite. Where like I being a clown, being somebody that is being a clown, being somebody that like is clearly uh, fast and loose and a talker, and that feels very full heart to me. That feels very impulsive. That feels very. Uh, jovial it also kind of ties into that idea that like i can't i can't let someone suffer like i i act i act with my heart before i act with my brain yeah i love that okay let's go so now we're gonna do our name and our year in high school yeah um remember for those of you out there this is a fun game for fun so all genders can be on the football team and everyone is treated with respect at the end of the day so you don't necessarily have to be a dude but, you know, Friday Night Lights kind of dictates it. But again, we're playing blaze ball here. Do whatever you want. Right. Um, I am a... I don't think I'm a senior. I think I'm a junior. Or maybe even a sophomore. For sure. Somewhere, I don't, uh, somewhere in, that, the, in those middle classes where I am neither... I am not so young. I'm old enough. I'm, I'm an... I'm an old enough class uh, class person that people take me seriously. I am a young enough class person that I am not that like uh, I am not given uh, full like given free reign. Yeah, I like that. If it helps you, I'm thinking I'm going to be a junior because I don't want to mm. be a senior that feels a little faded. But being a junior, especially from I remember in college, and I know from high school, and I know it's only gotten worse from now. Junior is the hard one because you're studying. You have to try to go to college. You're trying to figure out the college you want to go. You're taking the SATs. You're applying. You're doing all this shit. So I feel like the wanting more than football thing is going to play into that. So I'm going to be the junior. I'm going to be a junior here. So if you want to be another junior, you can be uh, since it's just like we're just playing a two a two person. Game. I think I'm going to be a senior. Ooh, I, I think I've taken it back. I think I am a senior. Uh, cause I, I, here's the, the conflict. I think I am, I think my pronouns are they, them. And I think my name is, I'm going to go, uh, D Pengrave. Ooh, I like that. Just D. Um, D um, let me think. I mean, uh, I'm going to go with, yeah, that, yeah, we'll go with that. I like that. Um. Yeah, I do too. Um, so D is, I think they're like, they're, they're a senior. And the reason is because I think that that really fuels that conflict for them mm. of like, I got to make sure everyone is taken care of because I think D has a, a scholarship to a school on the other side of the country. Oh uh, yeah. I think this time next year, D is gone. Like D is out of, D is, D is, D is off, uh, out of town. Far enough away that they can't necessarily, like, come home on the weekends. Far enough away that they might not come home over the summer. And so there's a real sort of existential crisis of, like, is everyone going to be okay when I leave? There's a real, and I think that if we were making Friday Night Lights now, 
there's a real like I'm gonna go to technical college and then I'm gonna work in Silicon Valley and then everyone in my life is gonna get paid because I'm gonna make buttloads of money mm-hmm. to being a tech person. Like, I wonder if you go to, like, CIT, because it's just, like, California generally. It's just, like, CIT, California Institute of Technology. And it's like, oh, everyone knows that, like, (laughs) Headbook is there, and that's where where I'm going to get hired, you know? Yeah, and I think they are are eager to to start that new life, right? Like, they are, they have waited so long to be part of that scene that, like, they're, that, like, when they go, they're not looking back. And, like, they might come and visit, but, like, this will stop being home for them, which has brought the weight of, like, but then I have to make sure that everyone is okay, which has drawn them into this web of, like, I'm in a really difficult situation. Really good. Um, I feel like I want to slot it next to you very badly, because I think that there's a real quarter, for those of you out there who don't know anything about football, the quarterback throws the ball and the wide receiver catches mm-hmm. the ball. So I think that we do have a relationship just like that, um, which is if there is a, still an odd couple situation, but maybe I'm envious of you that you know what you want to do and you mm. are getting out because my name is uh, Bartholomew Allentown. <laughs> but, Perfect. Good. <laughs> but uh, everyone just calls me Buck. And uh, so I'm just Buck Allentown. I mean, I've, my family's been in this this town for years and years and years working at the old blank, which we'll find out later. Um, and like, maybe I don't want I don't want to do that. Maybe I want to go do something else. And the fact that you know exactly what you want to do when you want to get out is so nice. It's like, I, yeah, I'm throwing the ball, I'm carrying the offense, but like, you get to go out there and catch it and like do a funny touchdown dance, and like that's really fuck. Like, man, I. I like that. I really and that that tells me go, thinking more about the setting that tells me that like this is somewhere where family business is important, mm. which like ties in nicely to that kind of working class uh background is that like this is something where you know businesses get handed down. Like like you you probably have a like this is an over dramatic way to say it, but like you have a birthright. Like you have a family business to to step into it's that like no, it, say like, birthright this is a drama man have, this is friday night yeah, lights you, my birthright is to run the auto body shop on the little bit outside there it of is. town we got it because yep, yep, that 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 auto body shop is your birthright and it is it the, the 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 challenge to you as you are filling out sat application or, and writing essays and like trying to do all these things is are you going to accept that I think if like if I go, I'm going to business school just so that I can run the auto body shop better, and like I'm eventually going to take it over because there is like a sense of savvy in mechanics, of like there is a business savvy to it. Is like you don't know what knows what you're getting charged. You just like you need to build relationships with your customer and gouge the people who are the people who are terrible. So it's like yeah, I'll get like maybe I'll get an associate's or I can get a four year mm-hmm. uh, business degree if someone will pay for it, and then I'll run the thing because like. My grandpa, who 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 founded the auto body shop, and I think it's Allentown and Sons, uh, yep. car repair, is like he made, he put it outside of town because he knew that people would break down coming into town. There's no reason to do it in town when people are already broken down on the side of the highway. Mm-hmm. So like even there's like such an idea of like you need to be savvy, like your grandpa and your dad who has been running it has done this are good at it. I love that. Oh, uh, pronouns that. and pronouns he, him. Um, so I next we're going to choose our lucky number and say why it's significant. Um, I rolled a dice for this and I got the number that I wanted to get. So here's the number that's important to me. Please. I rolled two, which means it's a two digit number. The number that's important to me is 96 because as anybody that did a numbered sport or anything <laughs> related knows in high school... That if you put in the number 69, they will tell you no. Right. They will say you can't run with that number because I'm cool. I'm hip. I know what that number is. You're not going to get one over on me. So instead, what you do, what the cool kids do is they make 96 and everybody looks at the number 96 and goes, uh, see what that is. I see. I see what you're going for there because if you take those numbers and you flip them. So that's why the number 96 is important. <laughs> yeah. 5,000 percent. I love that. <laughs> All right, D is I, like that's 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 it. I'm 96. I'm 96. Goes, 
Uh, all right, all right. I was like, okay. It's like those are my two favorite numbers. <laughs> it's like yin yeah. and yang. It was like, all right, D, you don't have to tell me all about it. Jesus. <laughs> like, but, but they get really, like, if you get them going and you genuinely ask them, they get really into, but if you if you flip them, you see, you see, you see what I did? Yeah. Huh? I think there is, yeah. <laughs> D, like, studied, like, read, like, five Taoist books so that they would be able to say that six, that 96 was like a reverse yin and yang and like a whole thing and built, <laughs> built it just to expound upon it for 20 minutes. But I was like, no, it's actually um, it's 69 backwards. It's 69 backwards. <laughs> yeah, you got it. You got it. You, you got it. You know. Uh, okay, I rolled a five, and in my head it's a zip code. Okay. And I don't know what Buck's thing is. But I think it's related to that. It's that your favorite, Buck's favorite number, Buck's favorite number is a zip code that he can't escape to. He's like, he has a literal happy place and it's a literal mm. town. I love it. I adore it. And like, I don't even know what it is yet because ordinarily it'd be like in the middle of nowhere or maybe it's a city. Because like, I don't think he wants to act. So I don't think it's like Hollywood or something. I don't know. Maybe it's like space. Maybe he loves space. Maybe it's Cape Canaveral. Well, uh, I was going to say, well, whatever. I was going to say, I think that segues us really nicely into the next piece of the puzzle, which is uh, where, like, what did we do over the summer? Because I think I feel like that zip code would naturally flow into that if it was something outside of town. If we went on a vacation together or like we did something together that way. Yeah, I think. All right, I'm going to go with Cape Canaveral. And I think okay. that maybe, did we go to like shitty space camp together? For, oh, we for sure did. For like so a we weekend? Went, we, went to, we went to shitty space camp together. Uh, well, that an, and that answers where I'm going. Mm. I, I got a scholarship with like, a, not, uh, I, I think I am like, NASA proper has given me a scholarship because of like my performance at the camp. Like they did like a testing part. For, like, the older kids, and, like, I just happened to get the numbers that they were like, we're willing to, like, fund you to go to this school and this program in exchange for, like, an intern, a summer internship. And I'm like, well, if I get a chance to go to space, mm -hmm. well, I'm hmm. taking that chance. Do you want to go to space? I don't want to do the same thing as you, I think. I don't know if I want to go to space so much as I think, like, I want to be involved in tech. And so, like, in my head, I'm just like, yeah, if I get to go work for NASA... Yeah, I think that may. Am I pouring all of my energy into you doing that because I don't think anyone's gonna let me go to space? Oh, and then like, well, and that's probably why we're friends, right? I think I liked you before because just from the being on offense together and sure. like hanging out. But I think that you're smart, and I'm not necessarily. Even if I'm the golden boy, I'm like there's a level of like, you don't need to be smart to be the golden boy. You need to be competent and good. Mm -hmm. So, like, maybe even if you stand out, you're so fucking smart and you're so funny and you you know things and you get to tell me about things. And I'm just like, oh, shit, like galaxies, man. Right? I love it. I adore it. I, I love it. I think it's very good. Um, I also yeah. think that to something that we said before, so I just to formalize that step for summer days – we talk about what we did over the summer and how it brings you closer and farther apart. So we went to shitty space camp. But I think that I want to do the same thing back to you is that I asked you, I didn't have money for shitty space camp. Mm. And it's like, yeah, I could work at like the fucking grocery store for like three months and I'll have enough. But I won't I won't have the money together until like August. Fuck. And I was like, I'll get it for you in a week. Like just and were you the first person that I that I like hooked up with or like I hooked up with cash because like I had worked out that this was an option? Yeah. If, or maybe like you started doing it before you started doing it before. But you're the first you're like, oh, I don't really care about this because it's it's just money. But like if I can give it to other people. Like, yeah. you need money. Maybe you're the kind of person who needs money with a purpose. Like, money has to do something. It's not, yeah. It just doesn't sit there. Yep. I and love I'm, that. That's perfect. Like, Fuck, I don't want to work at, like, stop and save for three months and then not a, not being able to go. And then you're like, oh, I'll, yeah, don't worry. I'll just send it in. And you'll take care of both of us. If you And you're like, maybe, and I'm like, oh, shit. I mean, I'll drive. <laughs> 
kind of we drove down to like Florida to like the Panhandle of Florida where shitty space camp was. I lo- that's perfect. I love it. Wonderful. And so with that, we just come up with the name of our high school, uh, where we are, and the name of our team. Yeah. Oh, and then my fa- and then my favorite part is right after this. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm excited. I just read be- it and I'm really excited. It's gonna be good. Okay. Um. So I do want to do Pennsylvania. I think Central Pennsylvania is good if you don't. Mind. Yeah. Yeah. Like Pittsburgh area. Yeah. 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 My Not dad in my, Pittsburgh. My dad is from Erie, Pennsylvania. So like that. That area. Yep, that Rust perfect. Belt gotcha. shit is is. That's like somewhere in between Cleveland and Pittsburgh, you're going to find our town. Yep, that's where, yep, exactly, exactly. Our, which means that our team name is... <sighs> it needs to be something like... I, I feel like it needs to be tied... Does it need to be tied to the town? Or it has to obligatorily be a metalworking thing? Or is it just think, like the Panthers? Um, It's... uh. It is. I I would love it to be metal themed. Oh shit! Okay, here we go. This is related to trucking, which I think is okay. me- closely metal themed, and I really love um, sports teams that are single, that are not plural. They are singular. Yep. How about the convoy? The convoy is real good, especially because like that's a that's a chant. That's a good chant. You know, convoy, convoy. And like that's a real good chant, like that's that's peak. Like we're we're in the we're in the state finals, and the crowd is cheering that. That's 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 anime theme playing in the background. Level chanting is what that is. Here we go, convoy. Here we go, toot toot. Yeah, that's good. We are the we are the convoy. There's also um I don't know if you remember this, but there's a song by um, C W McCall from the seventies. Of course, I know con. Uh, we're a great big convoy uh, drive driving through the night. Through yeah. the night. We're on gonna convoy. So I feel like they play that when you win when you win the game for sure. They absolutely do. Oh man, um, is our town named McCall? <laughs> it might be McCall. Is it McCall, Pennsylvania? The and McCall, our, and yeah, the-, the McCall, Pennsylvania, with the McCall uh, convoy. Absolutely. There it is. We got that. Thank you. C- CW was actually called Allentown, but then, <laughs> but in the sixties, we realized another place was called Allentown, and then we're like, "Oh, in the seventies, CW McCall came through," and we're like, "We love this. It's named after you." CW McCall saved our. So what happened is, uh, the song "Convoy" was actually written as like a fundraising thing because a wealthy business person was going to buy Allentown Two. We had ultimately landed on Allentown Two, but a wealthy businessman was going to come through and plow the town, which seems wild. Like that seems over ambitious. But CW McCall wrote "Convoy." We rallied around the song and used the money to save our town, so we renamed the town in his honor. Oh, my God. Um, (laughs) I just found an article from NPR that said how a trucker's protest album became a 70s hit all about Convoy, and it's super (laughs) weird. So I'm going to send it to you and just read that. If you're done listening to this podcast, read that. I'm so excited. This is this. this, My night has taken an unexpected turn for the better. (laughs) Oh, my God. Okay. All right. Uh, Incredible. So we're in McCall, Pennsylvania. We're the convoy. And so last but not least, we are going to each share a scandal that really happened in our hometown. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're going to pick the one that we want to happen in this town and describe how each character is affected by it. Um, I've done this, I've ran this a few times, so I want to do something new. Um, I'm going to go with, um, of course, like in so many places, the, uh, students of my high school, uh, home of Stanley Tucci, um, Andy Milanakis, and Roger Stone, <laughs> a murderer's row of people you wanted to go to our high school. Yep. Um, they, the students tried to do the vagina monologues, and the administration was like, can you not... <laughs> Please, can we not do this? And then they made a real big fuss about it. And then the the uh, author of the Vegeta monologues like chimed in and like made a statement about it, and it was a really big deal. And then eventually it was just like fine. And then they did it. It wasn't a big deal. Uh, I do think there were some other like under rumblings that the the students who wanted to do the Vegeta monologues. It was like junior year, and this was also related to what I was thinking about, like. This is when college started getting, like, really, really fucking hard to get into. I feel like happened when I was trying to apply to college. And I feel like they were doing it to put it on their college resumes. That, like, mm-hmm. they did a thing. And it was, like, important. 
So like mm-hmm. no one even knew if they were doing it like altruistically or for like artistic reasons. They're just like, no, vagina monologues. So I have two. Um, first off, well, I have two. I have two and a famous person. Uh, the famous person is not really a famous person, but it's a funny enough story that I want to share it. It's not at all what I think happened, but I think it's funny. I'm this is I'm sharing this for you and for the listeners. Uh, somebody from our hometown, Mount Holly, New Jersey, um, ended up on an MTV show called From G's to Gentlemen. Mm, yeah, uh, which was hosted by the Butler. I don't remember his name. Um, but he was a butler and it had turned out there's a controversy in the first episode of the first season of from G's to gentlemen where they sit down with someone. And the premise is that like, these are all people that like are looking for like a big break. Either they're looking to start a business or they're looking to like, you know, they all have stories and reasons for wanting the cash prize at the end, except it came out that the guy from our hometown was from a really well off family and like had lied on his background in order to get onto the show and was kicked off in the first episode because they unearthed all of this in the background check. Yes, this is what we need to do. (laughs) Um, The other thing that I'd like to share is also student theater related. And it is that my freshman year, we put on a production of Les Mis that bankrupted the school for several years. (laughs) Why? Why and how? Because <laughs> they did. They went so hard with their production of Les Mis that it just wiped their theater budget and like their extracurricular budget for years. Like it just they they, they did the full rotating stage and they what? like did production and like they just blew an inordinate amount of money on a production of Les Mis. Oh my with god! With a full rotating set for a bunch of fourteen year olds. Okay, I love both your stories. We're not doing my dumb story. We're going to do one of those. I could a- either go either way. I oh, think... and the third one, which I think oh, the third so story. <laughs> Keep giving it to me, Jeff. Keep giving it to now me. Now I'm thinking it through, and I'm realizing this is probably the least interesting, But and I don't remember the topic, but there is an episode of MTV's True Life that was filmed at my high school. <laughs> was it the one where I want to be a white rapper? It was not I want to be a white rapper. Oh, because his name was Niall, and the blizzard is coming. These are things that I keep in my brain, Jeff. I'm glad. I'm glad that you do. You're going to have like three listeners. I'm going to be like, oh, fuck. Uh, I love the lame is one. And I think that there I mean, is something here. Is it? It was it a production. I, I would love for it to be a production of the vagina monologues. That was so uh, well. I, now, you know what? No, scrap that. It's it's just a theater production of like some show. What what's the funniest show for a high school theater department to do and wipe their budget doing? It needs to be Hamilton. It's gotta be. It's gotta be Hamilton. <laughs> we did a full production of Hamilton. It's like this was when <laughs> Lin Manuel Miranda was feeling really cheeky on Twitter, and he's like, "Hey, if you Venmo me one dollar, I'll give you the rights to do <laughs> to do Hamilton at your high school." And like our theater for, for uh, like our theater director or theater teacher got it, and then they went totally over budget trying to like make sure that Lin Manuel Miranda saw it, and it was also like lots of white kids just doing it. Mm-hmm. And I, I think. Um... Like, there are still, so I think the thing that I want to take from this is that there are still, like, Hamilton set pieces just around the school. Mm -hmm. There's just, like, you know, you'll walk through the hallway and you'll see, like, part of a ship coming into New York. And there's just, like, a ship's, uh, like, a ship's mast is just in, like, is in the gym and they haven't moved it yet. And, like, pieces of the set are just around. I think that, like, still on the stage is the, because, you know, the thing that they were doing in in Hamilton was the, they were the one with the rotating stage, like, they really Mm -hmm. were pushing it, and I feel like it's still there, and they still use it, and now they have to, like, rent out the auditorium to, um, like, local businesses doing presentations or, like, investor (laughs) meetings or something, and, like, you see it spin around a bunch of times. Yeah. I love it. I adore it. It's very good. I love that a lot. So, I think that, um, uh... My family worked on the engine that spun that spins the stage around. Like, like there's there's like a car, there's like a, a scooter engine attached to the stage. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was really interesting, just like being able to apply um 
my knowledge and experience of cars and of like tech and of auto body and like mechanics to um to like the arts and doing something else and i feel like it's like hey maybe i can do other stuff with this knowledge like maybe i can go to space like maybe i will be an astronaut my role in the musical was managing our social media department <laughs> because one of the things that we spent a bunch of money on was like or one of the like completely elaborate unnecessary flourishes we added was like we had a bunch of people tweeting in character oh yeah 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 around yeah. during the show yeah and like they all all these accounts have like 14 followers but like they all had to be managed and it was my job to manage them <laughs> Was this like uh, then you could see the tweets on screens during like pr- before the show started in intermission? Yep, hundred percent. Yeah, we need and to make like, sure we get the right screens. We have to buy the right screens, and no one noticed. <laughs> Half the people thought they were tweets from the students, and they were like, "Kids seem to be really enjoying enjoying the show." They really don't want to give away their shot. That's incredible. <laughs> All right. And so now the school was... is bankrupt. Oh, uh, it's very funny is the thing. Here's the thing so, about this right. game. Here's the thing about this game. Because it's GMless, you literally can just go on and do character creation forever and mm-hmm. not play the game. It's my favorite. I mean, I, right. this is this is the type of game that I love. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to jump into our first episode. Um, We've chosen my scandal, so I'm going to start. So D is going to start as the main character. Yes. The main character has narrative control of this round. All players can and should contribute and add ideas, but it is up to the main character to decide what happens. At the beginning of the episode, the uh, main character names the team we're playing against in football. We are playing against the, uh, we are playing against the Squonks. Squonks. We are playing against the, uh... We are playing against the Log Valley Squonks. Love it. Love I don't know it. if you, Eric, know what a squonk is, but it is a Pennsylvania uh, cryptid staple. Yes, the one that that is so ugly it cries itself to death. Yes, yes. The, the, they are the so we are up against the squonks. Believe the, me, the log the Log Valley Squonks are are the next team on our uh, on our 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 uh, team schedule. Got it. I love it. All right, um, so now you're going to roll on the conflict table, which is on the next page, and you're going to yep. describe the conflict of this episode whenever someone rolls a result that in case... Oh, we'll skip that. Um, then you're going to set a scene where all of the characters would be at since you're a core group of friends, and we kind of go everywhere together. It can be very loose. Obviously, they're main characters, so it's wherever you are, and I'll probably shoehorn myself in. But like, I'm not going to be at your family dinner if you don't want me. If right. you don't... <laughs> if Buck shows up to your family <laughs> dinner... Whatever. Hey, Buck! Oh, hey, but Hey, I brought fried chicken. Was that what I was supposed to bring? No one told me. Um, so then you're going to be the spotlight, and you try to resolve uh, this conflict, and I'm going to jump in as NPCs and our, my own character as it sees fit. Um, and then the thing is about this conflict is because we're in high school and because this is Friday Night Lights and a drama, just like, we're let's escalate it. Like, it just mm-hmm. needs to escalate no matter yep. what happens for you to resolve it, and we'll uh, figure that out together. So let's Excellent. roll on the conflict table here. So I have rolled a five, mm-hmm. which is friends are fighting. Oh, no. And I have to decide who is fighting. So remember, this is also week one. This is probably yep. like September. We're coming off of two a days where we did practice twice. This is a real thing that happens in football, which is fucking whack, is that you have practice twice in a day. You would have like four hours of practice, then lunch at four hours again. And you do that for like two weeks in the summer. So now we're like, we're getting ready for week one. We're jazzed up. It's like the first week of school in Pennsylvania. Still, people are still wearing shorts, but we're jazzed up and people, friends are fighting. Our kicker, whose name is, uh, whose name is, uh, Tyler Joel. (sighs) Tyler Joel is our kicker and has been, um, very i'm gonna say if it's all right with you i think tyler is fighting with you yeah i think tyler is fighting with you because tyler wants to take your place on the team not necessarily in a position sense because there are very few skills that would translate between a kicker and uh and a quarterback sure 
but in the sense of like Tyler wants to be the anchor of the team. Tyler, Tyler's like, you know, Buck is Buck. Buck has had his shot. Like it's time for new leadership. Like I want to be the locker room leader. Oh yeah. I think maybe like before, right. This is like very soon before the game. Is this like the, 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 day of the game if we're playing on Friday and we're doing mm-hmm. like our walkthroughs and since the first week of the season like this is usually when the quarterback like makes a big speech but then like Tyler does Tyler come in and try to do his speech oh you know what it is um it's actually well, I'm escalating we're escalating yeah half the team doesn't show up for your speech because Tyler has organized like a, a straight up coup of like the of like you're gonna come like you're not gonna go to the locker room we're gonna we're gonna meet in the parking lot and like there is like and this is an active like full on schism of the team where like half the team has not shown up to the locker room which is where our scene is set as like we are realizing like we have we we can see them through somebody um okay so our scene opens with um our scene opens with uh we're gonna call him. Uh, Dickie Morrison, Dickie, uh, he, his is, uh, the Rudy of our team. Yeah. Yeah. Dickie, Dickie little guy, you know, a lot of heart. Um, Dickie run bursts into the locker room. Everybody, everybody, uh, it's bad. Well, actually, uh, this is, this is an important question. And actually we, I should, I should stop and think this through. We probably, if we're different Gen- eh, we can do a mixed gender locker room. I think it's like we probably have. There's probably like a meeting room there, yeah. or like a practice where you watch film and stuff. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be in the locker room. It's probably like in the meeting room. The team, yeah, the team, the team room. Yeah. We're in the team room. Um, Dicky kicks in the door. There's a problem, and like we all run to the. There's a whole. We do a breakfast club shot where one of us slides in the hallway. We run to the door. We look out the window, and there's a second team huddle happening in the parking lot. We see them from across the field. Oh God, fucking! Damn. There, and we see Tyler like leading the chart, like leading the like wa- doing a patent walk back and forth yeah. with the hands behind the back, like hamming it up. Um, I think I'm immediately. I go for the door. I'm just gonna go out there and I'm just like I'm gonna kick Tyler's fucking head in. Who whoever thought of a kicker? No, a kicker doesn't leave the team. It's car. I those guys half of those guys just thought it was in the parking lot because they're so they didn't even think about it. We just always do everything in the locker room in the team room. And they're not even thinking about it. I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna I'm gonna like is a real hold me back moment where I'm like yeah. I'm gonna kick his ass. I'm just gonna kick his ass. Hold me back, guys. Hold me back. I'm gonna take him down. And I think I think I think D is like. D like stops you and like kind of like like they everybody holds you back but D kind of steps up and it's like it's like we we need to we need to do this we need to do this our way. Listen, listen. I agree with you. You you and I are on the same page here. Yeah. But if we go out there, if we go out there and we start throwing hands, A we're going to lose the game. Do you want to lose the game? This is our first game of the season. Oh, no, D. I don't want to lose the game. Okay, good. Good. And remember, a uh, good and and what's everybody going to think if you go out there screaming and throwing hands and Tyler is out there looking cool, calm and collected? They're going to think I'm going to look. Stupid. They're going to think they're going to think Tyler's the leader. Yeah. We need we need to. You're, you're right in that we need to confront. OK, but we need to do it on our terms. What what do you have in mind? You're not going to like it. <sighs> I already don't like what's going on. <laughs> we cut that way like pan or like you know smash cut yeah the two halves of the team have lined up in the parking lot and there is not podiums but the two of you are facing each other in a debate oh <laughs> and i i am i am pacing in the middle uh, now I am doing the patent walk like the the patent walk and like i am clearly playing this up because like part of this is me just playing a joke on everybody of like this is how and like I'm like reading off the rules of engagement of like each person will have 30 seconds to state their case. Each opposing party will have a 30 second rebuttal and then there will be a 30 second counter rebuttal. And I'm like reading these responses and everybody is everybody is exactly that right. Everybody's like, 
oh my god, what are they doing? Why is this this happening? The families are starting to come in. <laughs> the coaches are just like, ah, oh, no, let them let them work it out. They got, uh, they got uh, it. They, they got to handle this. They got to do this their way. They got to do it their way. It's What am I to be to be in there and tell a bunch of teenage, teenagers to figure their stuff out? I'm yeah, not going to. You know what? They're not throwing hands. This is an improvement over last time. <laughs> That's a, this is a convoy tradition. Sometimes the convoy, you need somebody on the CV radio saying, well, it's what? And you got to figure out who the person is. It's not me. <laughs> I'm, I'm coach. I'm drinking a, a Coke Zero and I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think here, so I think it's up to you. Who do, what do you want to break, to shake out? Um, I think, I think, um, what I want to shake out, what I think is going, what we have going into the game itself is, let me ask you, what do you say that gets the team, not Tyler, but the rest, but the team like back on your side? Um, oh, I think at one point Dickie runs up. And whispers something in my ear, and I get a smile on my face, and I'm like, "Listen, I've been living in this town for long enough. I've hung, I have taken care of your little siblings. I have brought food to your grandparents. I have worked on some of your first cars, and I know this town. But Tyler, he lives in the town over. I don't even know why he goes to this school. And I, <laughs> Dickie has showed me a map that Tyler's that Tyler's house." is outside of the jurisdiction of the school. And he's just like, this man is a fraud and I'm here for you. And I'm here for you. I like it. I love it. Exactly. I love it a lot. So I think that it goes, I'm going to say that the conflict goes well. Okay. But the drama that I want to inject during play as we are making our plays is that, um, what we don't know is that Tyler, bought his way into this school because he saw an opportunity to be a star player Mm -hmm. like he is a shark who smelled blood in the water and like his family is old money and like arranged it so that they could go to this school i love that to be a star player and so like he is going to do everything he can to sabotage oh absolutely i feel like there's a way there's like tyler could have went to the very good school there's like in the good school district but his parents forced him to go to, like, our school, which is in a not great school district, just so that he could, like, shine amongst rubble. Yeah. Even if he's just being a kicker. Yeah. It's like, we don't we don't play soccer in this family. We only play American sports. And if you're going American to use foot, your foot... American football is what the celebrities play, so that is what you will play. And you will be the best kicker, and you'll get a, st- a, you'll get a scholarship to University of Texas Austin. <laughs> as a kicker they don't need old ex-rugby players going out to their college no we're joels they only take joels at ut austin that's that's real good so that's and so um i'm trying to decide if i think if i think that that means if 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 tyler being actively you know what i'm gonna say that means that we start with a failed play. Okay. So you think because that Tyler that a, Tyler's actively sabotaging. Okay. So you think so at the end of the scene, the group decides if it went good or bad, depending on what characters think and gossip okay. from around town. So if you think it's bad, that's fine. I think that there is no way to resolve this in a way that's not good. If there's no, I think you're right. I think you're right. So so we're gonna start so we're gonna hold that in our heads. So yeah. we're gonna go to the game. Uh, the game in every single, uh, this game is, is, uh, the season is broken down into eight episodes and we're currently on Mm -hmm. episode one here. So you have the drama, the game and the aftermath. And now we're going to the game. The game is actually playing football. Um, so, uh, we're going to play the game by each player making quote unquote plays. Um, because we're two to three people, uh, we only need two successes or two failures. If you get two successes, you win the game. If you get two failures, you lose the game. Uh, starting with the player seated to the left of the main character, that's me, and then moving clockwise, each player is going to make a play by either rolling, by rolling either clear eyes or full heart, and those are tied to our our um, knowledge and cunning, which are clear eyes, mm-hmm. our passion and skill, and our full heart. Uh, here's the thing. 
you need to do both over the course of the season. You might pick clear eyes once, but then the next play you need to do full heart because as coach mm. says, football is a combo of both and that's the only way uh, you can't lose. So mm. if you're rolling clear eyes, you want to roll over your stat number. And if you're using full heart, you want to roll under your stat number. Mm. Uh, you start out with 1d6. If you can fit this play narratively into your archetype or your character, you can roll another one. And you can add a third d6 if you want to use your lucky number, but you can only do that twice per season. So those are the mechanics of how to, uh, of the game itself. Uh, remember, my, uh, my number is three, and Jeff, yours is four. So yes. we're either going to roll over or under that. You also get a special bonus if you roll the number if you roll the number itself. But uh, we're going to hold on to that as we go through. Uh, so because uh, the, the drama went poorly, uh, we automatically start with one failure. So we already have we're already fifty percent our way to losing the game because we're just out of it. As we're finally going to play against the Squonks, we're just like I can't believe. Some of the players are I, like, I can't believe a kicker like tried to take tried to take control of the team. See now, now, now I'm wondering because I feel like I think you're right in that like I don't think there's an outcome. I think even if Tyler wants to actively sabotage, I think everybody is going to go with with Buck here. Yeah, I still think that it's bad. I think it looks bad, especially from everybody. Like, I see what you're saying. If you hear you hear that there was a schism. In, there was a debate and a schism in the parking lot 30 minutes before the game was played. Like, yeah, that can't I think, be good. I see, yep. And I think that, I think that, um, I think, it, like, to, 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 like, it was in the parking lot, so everyone saw it, yeah. right? Like, it is un, it is unmissable that that schism happened. So I think you're right. I think we're down one play, so we need to make two without losing any. Right. And the thing about the drama is that it's not about what the main character thinks. It's about what everyone around thinks and the gossip in the town about what happened. Yeah. So that that's that's that. Okay, so I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to roll my clear... I'm going to roll my clear eyes right here. Right now, I'm just trying to... It's the first... This is like... I already maybe fumbled once or there was an interception and we're already down by like 10. And I'm like, I got to get my head of the game and just focus on my I'll focus on practice, focus on what happened. Like, I got to do this because football is all that I know, apparently. So that's I'm going to take a second D6 because it's part of my archetype and I'm going to roll to see my successes. Awesome. So I rolled a four and a six. Those are both over three. Uh, I got two successes, so I do it well. I'm going to describe how it's good and how I look cool to my peers. Um, what I'm going to do, I think that I roll, I think that I throw just like I'm getting tackled and I, and by two people and I throw just a 20-yard bomb into the into the uh <laughs> into the end zone and maybe uh maybe d grabs it and d does a really great mm -hmm. touchdown uh touchdown dance obviously as t's want d's want to do but i think that mm -hmm. the thing that i get over is that coach tries to send the extra point team in so tyler joel would be kicking the extra point and i wave them off and i just keep the offense on the field and i'm like we're gonna run the exact same play and get two points and then we get two points and uh, it's an eight point play great it's a great it's 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 a it was a gamble that paid off yeah all right so we got one success one failure this comes down to you d this comes down to me and i am going to um i'm gonna do full heart i think i think that there's there's a moment where um there's a moment where like the team is gathered and like it's close to the end of the game like stakes are as high as they can be yeah and I'm just like, you know, people are discussing strategy and I think, you know, Buck is talking to the coach and you're both like looking at the, the at the the playbook. And I just like it's like you're talking and you're talking and I kind of come out of nowhere and I just kind of slap the playbook like lightly <laughs> down onto the floor. <laughs> and I'm like, he throws. I catch. It's not complicated. Oh, D, you son of a bitch. I knew I could, I knew I could take care of you. And he's just drinking another Coke Zero on the side. Uh, lay off the caffeine, coach. It gets you, it gets you, it gets you, it gets you jittery. Convoy! Convoy! <laughs> Convoy. Convoy. And um, I think, yeah, I think that, um, I think what happens, though, is I do want to, I do want to, I do want to uh, play this into my archetype a little bit. I think you did that. D being an iconoclast 
and coming in and just being like, hey, right. I can deal with it. Because this is very similar to what you did before. It's, listen, Jeff, here's the thing. These are very loose rules for you to roll twice. All right. <laughs> I'm rolling two dice here, and I'm going to roll full heart, so I'm rolling under four. Oh, four or under. Let's go. Now, I did. I rolled a four and a two, so I got two successes, but I also rolled my number exactly. Wonderful. All right. That is a that is a can't lose. So make a That's tick. A can't lose. Make a tick on your character sheet to remember that we're going to talk about that in a, we're going to talk about that in a moment, but you got two successes. Uh, how do you, is, how do, does it just like, it's a pitch and catch? Like, it's just it's that simple? It's a pitch simple? and catch. I think there's a pitch and a catch and there's an element where um, there's an element where like we are we're in the huddle, right? Like we're we're looking and we're looking and we're ready. We're here and we're to the other team. And I'm looking at the player that has that has me on coverage. Like I'm looking at the defender and I'm looking I'm looking them dead in the eye. I'm looking I'm looking her dead in the eye and I tell her I'm like, I'm going to run up and then I'm going to cut left and Buck is going to throw it and I'm going to be here. And I'm just letting you know that I just I just want you to know that that's exactly verbatim what is going to happen. I like that. And, <laughs> and then she's just like, who's Buck? And then the whistle went that hike. <laughs> and and yep, in that moment of like, who is Buck? I run up. <laughs> I run to the left. You throw it. I catch it. And like there's and like I, I, I get the touchdown and she looks in my direction and she looks almost annoyed, but a little bit like impressed at the same time. And I kind of blush and shrug, and I'm like, I did, I did tell you. And like, it's the one time I don't actually do a, I don't actually do a, um, a touchdown dance. I'm just kind of like, I did tell you, but I'm still kind of owning that moment of like, of like, I, I completely, like, just, just this was, this was clockwork, right? Like, this is such a D move that, like, even when you don't do a touchdown dance, it still is when you just <laughs> shrug and then give the ball for the game winning touchdown and then you give the ball to the referee. Yeah, here you go. And, like, yeah, like, there's, there's this, it's this sort of like mock bashfulness of, like, yeah, I did, I did tell you what I was going to do. I gave you the chance. Oh, wonderful. Hey, we won the game. W, we won the baby. 1 and 0. 1 and 0. Convoy. Um, ver, ver. Convoy. Convoy. Um, and I think Tyler looks pissed. Oh, Tyler did not think that they were going to think that they were going to pull pull it out and we we crushed it. My narrative my narrative needs to be that you all fucking suck and then I make you better. How can we do that if you win the first game? Yeah, like, and then, uh, so now we're going to describe how, um, we describe how the adults, uh, okay, let me, let me stop this and go through, uh, now we, now we segue into the aftermath. Um, depending on if we won the game or not, we won, uh, the community reacts, the adults change in our eyes and they will exacerbate or try to fix the scandal in town. Um, we won, the town rallies around us, right? Like, the town, like we are the, we are the, we are, we are lifted up on the shoulders of the town because like, you know, somebody from outside of town, somebody with, somebody with money, which in our working class town is very suspect, tried to come in and change our football team. Like they tried to change the convoy. <laughs> um, They tried to, they tried to change the convoy. And so like, you know, our players are the best, like we won and. You know, you can't, you can't shake, you can't shake the heart of, you can't shake the heart of, um, McCall. You can't shake McCall's heart. Right. And so, like, that everyone, the, um, the scandal is exacerbated because, like, Tyler is humiliated. Tyler's family is embarrassed. And now they are in the tradition of rich, of evil rich families on teen dramas, actively swearing (laughs) vengeance on the town. Right. I think they, maybe... Hopefully, and I mean, if the Joels are anything that I think that they are, they're going to try to, like, inject their own money into the school. But, like, yeah. hopefully with this win and if a, if a school season is going to go well, that the school is able to, like, fundraise on their own. Because, like, the, the team, the football team's doing well. So, like, hey, why don't, let's raise taxes a little bit. Let's do a booster drive. Like, that sounds great. And I think, um, I think... I'm going to describe how 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 this has changed D mm-hmm. and I think they are um I think they're a little bit I think it kind of um they shut down some of their servers. Mm. 
Because I think what happens is, like, they see the town come together. And, like, and maybe like the, they, they, they feel a little bit, they feel a little bit, um, they feel a little bit of that, like, that lightness of, like, they get that sense of, like, maybe everything will be okay. But at the same time, there's that one that 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 one like hair is stuck in the wheels of like, but they've got money and they're going to try and destroy us. So it's that it's that feeling of like of like, I don't need to worry about. So what it is, I don't think that it necessarily like I don't think that my teen complication is like going away, but I think it's getting focused in a really specific direction. I like of like, yeah, of like, I'm not trying to fix people's everyday problems anymore. Any money that I use is going to be used to, like, make sure that they don't get to destroy what we've built. I feel like the last scene of the of this episode is we uh, we see that you had servers like set up in other places around the town that you couldn't just fit in your uh, Mm -hmm. in your room. So, like, maybe you're like at the 7-Eleven and you you're just like, hey, um, Rashid, like, hey, I don't need you to run that more. Like it's fine. Yeah. And Rashid, who's the guy behind the counters, is like, I mean, are you sure? Like, you helped me out. You didn't. You did all the accounting for last year of the <laughs> for last year of the uh, chug and squeeze. Like, I really needed you. And you're like, no, nah, man. I, it's, it's- I think I think what it is is I lean forward and I'm like, yeah, there is something that you can do. And that's where we cut it. And like slowly and surely, like I am changing my focus. Like I'm moving away from Bitcoin and changing my focus into like slowly turning all of the people that I've helped out into my little network to keep tabs on the Joel family. I love that. I love that. <laughs> you know, the actual final scene is fucking, is the Joel's coming into the chug and squeeze, and, like, Rashid has a, has a pad out. And is, like, <laughs> writing notes down. So, um, lastly, the last thing we're going to do this episode is I rolled a can't lose. Yes. So I get to ask you a question. Yeah, it can um, be either to... me or any NPC. So it can either be of Buck or anybody in the town. I want to know. Oh, that's a really uh, that's interesting. Well, then then I want to know, um, because I think we'll play one more episode because they go pretty quick. Yeah. Um, I want to know what's the best way. What's the best way to take out in a teen manner of speaking, not literally murder. What's the best way to take out Joel? What's the best way to take out Tyler here? Yeah. Like, what's I think I think that that's what I've used my my influence on is like. I want to know how to take uh, take Tyler Joel down. Yeah, I feel like Rashid has gotten back to you. And he's like, "Yeah, man, they they came into our, they came into the chug and squeeze a lot, which is weird <laughs> because I feel like they have fan, they have better places to go, but they keep coming to this place. And man, those parents, oh, those parents are not like my parents. My parents, they were they were they were fine, but like Jesus Christ." These, those parents, there was so much pressure on that boy. That's not, that's not fair. They should, they should not, I feel almost bad if you didn't tell me how much of a big asshole he was. Um, so I think that maybe the honest thing is if you would keep Tyler disappointing his parents, he'll kind of like self-destruct. Mm. That's good. That's good to know. Also, Rashid is my new favorite character. I love Rashid. I love, I love Rashid it. a lot. And Rashid is just like 25. <laughs> he's just oh, yeah. like a really good dude. Rashid's just like, he's, he, everybody, everybody's kind of his friend. Like yeah. everybody, like he is, he is, uh, he, he's, he's in, he's a side character that shows up in a lot of places where he just helps people out. Like he's our friend with a car. Yeah. He's our friend that, that will buy us beer if we need it. He's just like, and he's. And like he's he very specifically is like is like I'm not trying to get involved in your teen stuff. I just want you kids to stay out of trouble. Yeah, in any show, there's like a 20 year old who should not be involved. Like yeah. um like uh, Jessica Williams in Booksmart. You're like, yep. why is this here? But I guess we need you. Yeah, it's exact. That's exactly who Rashid is. Yeah, Rashid's a vet. Rashid, Rashid gives you an egg and cheese if you come in looking really really rough. Yep. I love it. Yeah, let's play another episode. I so Which means we come to our next episode. Yeah. So the way that this works is that you automatically you go to episode two. Um, you just do the whole thing again, but you rotate to the next player, um, who's going to be the main character. So Buck's going to be the main character this time. All right. So let's roll. Give us our con- give us our conflict. Let's roll on the drama table. Bop, 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 bop. Two romance at the school dance. Yes. Good. 
Convoy. Convoy. Prom episode. Well, technically, it's homecoming at this point. Yes, this is. I think this is our homecoming game, and I got to pick who we're going up against. And we're going up up against our longtime rivals, the um, uh, the name of the town that's popping into my head is um, Golden Ground. Golden Ground is a good town name. It's just like a, it's a farm town mostly, and it was named just like Golden Ground. So I think that they're golden. They got to be the Golden Ground Gophers, right? Yeah, yep. Beautiful. They got it. And uh, they are our, our homecoming rival this time. Apparently, we, we it's first. It's Go really first. <laughs> like, sorry, Jeff needs to get this out of, out of the system before we do this. Sports chants. I need to know the sports chant of any team that I'm of any team that I'm um, I'm imagining. I think um, it's kind of. They always set this up as the home co- as the homecoming because um, a lot of the kids are also. Uh, sons, daughters, and and children of farmers. So it's kind of mm. un- it's kind of mean because they didn't have enough time to practice because they were harvesting. <laughs> but mm. uh, so they uh, the town always sets them up against each other because it's an easy homecoming win. Yeah. Uh, so and yeah. I think that like I think that like our towns are not rivals. So it's like there's it's not a um it's not like a like a heated rival like the towns themselves like have a good relationship so it's always kind of a playful thing where like the mayors will bet like a bag of peaches uh, oh, yeah. and then there is like hand over the, the the basket of peaches and then like it's always just kind of a like maybe this year we'll get them <laughs> but they always let us go to the dance so it's really fine we, yeah we save stuff in our budget so it's fine I think maybe oh. this year we're worried that the there's like a, a C plot that the student council uh, doesn't have any money for the homecoming dance this year. Yep, um, but because they, we bankrupted the school. Yes, exactly. So there's like a lot of skin of our teeth, like reappropriation of stuff. It's really just taking parts of the Hamilton set. And it's like it's president themed this year. <laughs> it's co- it's colonist themed. Uh, it's like it's uh, the, the vote for your rights. Homecoming dance. <laughs> like everyone's like making a face, so we're like, "It's fine. Yeah. Just put on the songs we want. No one's gonna give a shit." <laughs> Real uh, good. Yeah. Um, let's see. Romance at the school dance. Do I want to open myself up to this interaction? Um, yeah, man. Tabletop RPGs are just for living out your past traumas. Um, I think that part of this idea. Um, I think Buck has had a crush on the same person for, like, three years. Like, middle, like, eighth grade, ninth grade, Mm -hmm. tenth grade. And, like, now that they're the starting quarterback, they thought that this would all, like, come together for him. You know, it's like, Mm -hmm. oh, oh, man, if only I was cool enough to ask this person out, but I can't because I am not starting. But if I'm the starting quarterback, that would fix all my problems, right? So I think that, like... It's this is like I didn't even like um, Buck. I think Buck has told D that they're gonna ask out the longtime crush at for the to the homecoming dance. Oh, and and D is this is immediately like the most important thing in the world. <laughs> D D already D already has uh, dates lined up. They are they are taking. They are taking the girl from the other team. They are taking the girl from the Squonks and her old girlfriend, and the uh, the three of them are just going as a, as a thruple, and it's going to be great. But like, wait, wait, did did D start dating the the cornerback of the Squonks? Oh yeah, that that <laughs> that, 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 that was a that was flirting, is what that was, and like and like we we see that, and then like. And so, like, that's already locked in. There's a cute scene. There's a cute scene with the three of them, like, making plans. But then literally, like, D gets a text as they're making plans with these with these these girls. Or, and it's just like, yo, I got to we, we, text me because I got to take care of something. The most important thing in my world has just appeared. <laughs> like, the, the ground beneath my feet is breaking open and the core of the and they are like. They are a dramatic person. They oh, just have absolutely. an energy that, like, when when something is important to them, they go they go too far. So, like, Buck, what can I do? What can I do to help with this? I think that Buck is like in his room, which is like in the basement, and he's why he has like a a pretty small TV in there, and 
um, he's watching Say Anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's the boombox scene. And yep. as soon as D D walks into the boombox scene is playing, and Buck's just like, is this what you do? <laughs> Does this work? Because it's working for Dobbler here, but I don't know if... He also seemed like he was stalking that other girl. So <laughs> I'm having conflicting feelings, and I need your help. All right, two things. And I need you to listen to both things very carefully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One... You're 100 percent correct. He was being a weird stalker. Don't 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 take anything Dob- uh, Dobbler does in this movie as canon. Oh, thank you. Two, trust my accept. God. Two, accept. Okay, that is gold. But it means we have to make you the perfect mixtape. It means we have to make you a mixtape that says exactly what you want us to say, with no round for misinterpretation, with that hits all the emotional beats that you want. I'm going to need to make a spreadsheet. Oh, <laughs> uh, hell we yeah. Cut, we cut back. We cut back and they have converted Buck's room into a conspiracy board. Oh, man. The <laughs> I like just trying to figure out exactly the songs that <laughs> you put on there. Th- threads on like pieces of paper on string. Like you see, there's a lyrical connection here where seal talks about a tower. And then we segue here and you can see the segue there and like <laughs> charting trajectories. So Bucky just like has his hands like, like laced behind his head. He's like, so is the metaphor I'm going for is that they're my sunshine or they're, uh, are they're ever my heart? All right, there you're. You're the tower on the sea, oh. and the, all right, you know what? And, and the lights rip, that we shine, can we bring? Yeah, I got it. I got it. Okay, rips down like six things. The, the, the subsection B isn't working. We're t- we're taking out subsection B. Okay, so do I give her a kiss and a rose, or what is a kiss from a rose exactly? Uh, Seal twenty five years not explaining that. He's not about to start now, and neither am I. That's true. That's true. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I, I think the question that I have to ask before our game mm-hmm. does uh do you pull the mixtape together and does it work? Okay. Um yes, I definitely pull the mixtape together. I think um all right, here's what happens. The day of the da- <laughs> day of the dance, right? Before I I didn't even. Sorry, I didn't even know who the crush was. I was kicking it down. I was kicking it down the road. Um, I think. Uh, I think her name is. You know, is her name just like Cornflower Blue? Because she had like yep, hippie that's parents, a right? Great ass name. Great ass name. It's just like she had hippie parents, and she's like Cornflower Blue. Boom, and her friends call her Corn for f- because yep. it's a good joke, and it's just like, I think. I think it's like that that scene you think is gonna happen in a movie where like the popular kid like comes up in their Letterman jacket like, Hey babe, what's up? So it looks like that, like Buck is in his Letterman jacket, um, which has like a big truck on the back. <laughs> it's like a massive truck on the yep. back. And it says like QB there's like a QB one patch on it too, and and uh and everything. Maybe there's like a CB, there's like CB radio wire, like sti- not real ones, but there's like stitching of it into it. And like Buck like walks up all swaggering and like Corn is there with her friends and they all scatter like, bye Corn, bye, bye. And he's like, he doesn't say anything. He just like holds out the mixtape, which is a cassette. Mm-hmm. And I think he's just like, here. And she takes it. And then he's like. All right, bye. And he walks away. Oh no, but so I'm gonna put it to you. I'm gonna say to you: Does is this a good thing or a bad thing? I think it seems like a bad thing. I think I think that like I think that like um, we get like sort of a Greek chorus situation from 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 D and yeah. the quarterback and her girlfriend of like the three of us are in the car like watching this and we watch you walk away and it's like I didn't know him. Uh, we never spoke. We're all in agreement and we like drive away. And, like, it seems like a nightmare. And then the day of the dance, like, um, a song comes on. Like, Kiss from a Rose by Seal comes on. And, like, we're all sitting and snacking and, like, 
you know, uh, we're all kind of hanging around Buck to try and make him feel better. And Kiss from a Rose comes on and Corn walks in the room, just looking radiant, walks mm. right up to you and is like, aren't you going to dance? This is our song. <laughs> yeah. Corn is like, I had to go to three different, I had to go to three different thrift stores to find a cassette player, but I did as a good mix. Oh, fuck. And- yeah. And so, yeah, it goes perfectly, and then it's now it's game day. It's game, yeah, let's go. I love this. Corn is, corn is in the stands. The girls are in the stands. Um, like, everybody is cheering for us. So we have we have a win under our belt, I think. No, so this is... this is, Or rather, uh, we have a, re- a re-roll because the, the, the conflict has gone well. Yes, yeah, so we have a re-roll. So if I, if I do a bad job, I can re-roll. Um, let me look at the, the things exactly. Do, 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 do. Um, if the drama went well, the main character may re-roll their play. So we'll see what happens if I need to re-roll it or not. But, uh, but, and then you need to stick with the re-roll. So let's go to the game. So it is, D's going to go first, but since you did full heart on the last I have to do clear eyes. one, you have to do clear eyes this time. Um, I think I am going to roll two though, because I think I am specifically trying really hard to impress everyone that's watching. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think, um, I might call for my third. If I may do it, because I think that like I think there's a moment where um, we're we're in the in the midst of the game. And like if I don't make this catch, it's going to go to a field goal like oh, yeah. it is third down. It is third down. If we don't catch this, it's going to go to a field goal. And I have to not let Tyler like I have to not let Tyler play because if Tyler doesn't play, it's going to embarrass his parents. Right. Like, exactly. like I have to take this. So I am trying to roll four or over. Yes. That is a four, a four, and a six. Incredible. All right. So you get, you you crit so well. You do so incredibly well. You uh, all you only get one uh, can't lose. But uh, yeah. keep that, make another tick on your uh, character sheet to remember. But yeah, you get three. It You just look so cool. Um, I think there's a moment... Where, like, we're about to do the play, and I look up at Maggie. Uh, Maggie is the quarterback on the Squawks. And I look up at her, and I just, like, tap my forehead. And and she kind of leans back to her girlfriend, and she's like, they're going to run up and to the left, and he's going to throw right to them. <laughs> that's that's their, like, they, 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 they spelled this out to me. Um, that's Buck, by the way. I don't know if, I don't know if you got his name. That's Buck. Um and sure enough, like, it's the same play, but, like, it's done in such a way that it, it, like, now it doesn't just feel like it's a play that we're pulling. It feels like it's our, you're in my signature play. Yeah. It's our ace in the hole when we're down. Like, we, we pull this play off and, like, the crowd loses it, right? Like, Corn is on her feet. The announcer um, is screaming about, like, about, like, it is the... It is the convoy jug handle, and like people are losing their minds. That that's the way that we always do it. That is Buck to D. That's how the truck rolls, right? Hulk, Hulk. Hulk. <laughs> Incredible. All right, we got one success on there. So I think that this is Buck's turn. I have to do full heart, and y'all, corn is in the stands. I'm just like. I can't believe this happened. I've talked to Corn four times in three years, but I just think I th- uh, I'm overjoyed. I'm over the moon. So I'm running on pure adrenaline, and I'm just like, at one point during the game, I just lay my hand on D's shoulder, and I'm like, "Man, what? Just go. I'll find you." <laughs> so I'm gonna roll one D. I'm a, I'm gonna roll uh, two D. I'm gonna roll uh, two D six because I'm just gonna like go I'm gonna it. throw it up there, and D's gonna get it. It's fine. Uh oh shit! I rolled a one and a two, so those are both under Aces. my set. Let's go, baby! Uh, oh yeah, I it's just like Tyler is fuming. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler is so mad because I'm even stunt. It looks like a stunt, but I'm just being dreamy at this point. That I just like I you know in football the quarterback holds the show like holds the ball up at their chest as like a like it's like I'm ready to throw the ball right. But mm-hmm. I think what I do is I drop back in the po- I drop back and I just like stand there with the ball at my side for a little bit and I'm just like, man, things are working out so well. Maybe I could tell my parents I want to be an astronaut. Like, 
maybe it's okay. And then like I snap back for a second and I'm like, oh shit. And I throw, just throw it as far as I can and D just pulls it out of the air. Yep. It's just, it's like with its own gravitational force, no pun intended. It's just like, I find you, we're connected. That's how it do. And it looks incredible. I feel like it gets, it's like number one on the local TV sports, like yep. top three. There's like top three plays from around the corn, from around Corn County. And yep, it was, exactly. and it was, uh, it was, uh, Buck Allentown just look, uh, like stunning on the, on the other team, just looking, walking around there like you, like you're, um, just walking around like you're sleepwalking and then throwing it uh, like a prayer to God. Um, incredible. <sighs> Wonderful. Okay. We got it. That's another dub. Let's just put that on the board. That's a blowout, baby. We are blow. We are we are crushing this. Here's the thing. You also teams are usually very good uh, <laughs> on, on these drama on these drama shows. This is this is also true. This is true. All right. So let's do the aftermath. Um, All right. So we won by a lot. The community racks again. More momentum. More excitement. I think that the homecoming dance finally came together. There's the subplot in the story where we're like. There's one football player who's also on student council, and it's like a big deal. And they pulled it all together, and it was so. It oh, it's was, Dickie, right? <laughs> oh, it's Dickie. Yeah, Dickie's also on student council, and they all pull it together. And it's this the dance. Also, the people from um, Golden Ground also don't don't see anything different. They're like, "Great dance, thanks everybody," and uh, everyone's just having a really good time. I think Buck also is dancing with Corn, and Buck says. Um, so, I guess I should have said something when I gave you the mixtape, right? And I, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, but you liked it. You liked it though. It it was a little overthought out, if I'm being a hundred percent honest. But the heart was in the right place. Yeah, that happens a lot. <laughs> I think I think D in a in a, in, in, in a trio's dance hears that and just mumbles under the breath. You don't understand art. <laughs> I like how that Man. seeds that seeds like it's a uh, strife in the future if D doesn't like corn. Uh, wonderful. It's entirely they did, they didn't understand their mixtape. It's, it's like look, corn's not corn's not good enough for you, Buck. Corn thought the mixtape was overwrought. That's ridiculous. You deserve the best. Um, I want to uh, ask your can't lose question before I I uh, close out. Uh, this episode. Um, I want to ask you. I think like I think that like I am interviewed on like the local sports radio show. Oh hell yeah! Um, it's Rashid's radio show. Oh um, hell yeah! Because he is uh he is a uh, he's an uh an assistant professor and like runs the college radio station. I love that. Um, so it's his radio show, and I think they ask me like if I'm gonna bring this same momentum to. Uh, to Cape Canaveral. If I'm going to bring this to, if I'm going to bring this with me to Canaveral, this sort of momentum. And so, my question uh, to you, in the back of D's mind, what's the best way to get you to come with me? Oh shit! I think at one point, when we're like, this is like after football season, which we both explicitly take as time for us to eat, like as much as possible. <laughs> Like mm -hmm. I don't like if you've ever seen two high schoolers at a barbecue joint like go into town like that's yeah. what it looks like and I think at one time we're just hanging out after that and I'm like you know I have everyone expects me to to run the, run the automotive business Allentown and Sons after this my dad has a younger brother and he could do it doesn't have to be me he could he could. He he wants it to be me. He doesn't like. It. I don't see what the fuck. I don't see what's wrong with him. It could be him. I don't know. And then I buck burps for five seconds in a row. <laughs> yep, that's exactly what happens. Incredible. Thank thank you, D. Thank you for the oh. opportunity. Um. All right. So this is how the adults change in our eyes. Yeah, I think that the money, a lot of money, actually comes in from the dance, from concessions, and we're able to like pat, make sure that like. The English class has books <laughs> it, yep. uh, for the upcoming uh, unit that they're doing on The Great Gatsby. Um, I think that Buck feels confident for the first time. I think that there is the expectation because he's like a big dude who can throw a ball far that it's 
easy and okay for him just to do all this stuff. But, like, he actually feels confident in his own decisions. And even mm. though D helped him a lot because he does need D there, because D is, like, anti-establishment in so many ways, but, like, in a good way. And this is also how, thank you for creating such a wonderful character who I love so much and wish oh, I had a, a, a Blazeball style following <laughs> of uh, D's fucking Penrose. Uh, sorry, Pengrave. Yeah, Pengrave. That's how we do it. Um, is that he feels confident in something that he did and he actually reached out for something that he wanted instead of just like, mm -hmm. it was going to happen to him or it wasn't. And he actually did something about it. Um, and he feels good. And maybe things could be better if everything, if he can, maybe he'll do something to change, change his world instead of waiting for it to happen. I love that. I adore it. I'm so happy about that. And I think that's where we leave these characters. I think that's game. Oh yeah. That's game for now. So ordinarily, um, a clear eyes, full hearts is for a, a. It's supposed to be a full season. It feels like binging a full season. Uh, so you so you should play it in two sessions. Uh, maybe you'll play like uh, character creation and then one one through three, and then you do four through eight. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you can feel free to pick it to drop it and pick it up. Especially character creation is so much fun. It feels like it's, it's such a it's episode. such a blast. It's such a such a great experience. Uh, Eric, thank you so much for coming on the show and playing this game with me. This was exactly what I wanted. This was perfect. Thank you. I very not often get to talk about both like games and storytelling and sports. And this is why Misha and I put this together in the first place. Um, that like yeah. the sport, the narratives around sports, whether it's a sports anime or a sports drama like this, or just like sports in general is yeah. so much fun. And this is why we put the, ge the game together. It's so good. It's brilliant. I loved it. Thank you so much for coming and playing it with me. I had such a blast. It 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 hit exactly the beat that I wanted it to hit, and it scratched the edge that I wanted it to scratch, and I could not be happier. Thank you. You was so much fun playing, and I hope we oh. will. I should just come back and we just continue the episode. This episode I was like, well, hey, we pick up with D and Buck. We honestly, I mean, nothing saying we can't, but that's a story for another day. For now, where can people find you, your work, and Clear Eyes, Full Hearts online? Absolutely. Let me make sure I have it. It's I changed the itch.io to be, I think it's just eric.itch.io, so I'll be able to, they'll be able to find it there. Okay. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at L underscore Silvero. That is E-L underscore S-I-L-V-E-R-O. That is my name if I was a Lucia Libre wrestler. You can find, uh, join the party wherever podcasts are listened to. Uh, with, remember, is our Dungeons and Dragons 5th uh, edition game that we care a whole lot about. And I think you'll like a lot if you liked what we did today. You can find that wherever podcasts are sold or at jointhepartypod.com. Um... You can also check out Multitude, which is the uh, podcast collective and studio that I work for, uh, that I'm the head of creative of. Um, we're doing a lot of really great shows there that all have this kind of like open armed, we want you to be a part of the thing that we love, uh, kind of has that context there. And you can find Clear Eyes Full Heart on my itch, which is ericsilver.itch.io. It is the only game that I've made. It's my game with Misha Stanton. And if you're looking for something that I've written for Dungeons & Dragons, you can go to the Join the Party merch store where I have created No Capes, which is a uh, decoupling of Dungeons & Dragons from high fantasy and putting it in a modern count. It's about reskinning, putting it in a modern context, and maybe adding some powers and thinking about what it's like to use magic in not an explicitly fantasy world. That is at uh, the Join the Party merch store, which is, let me just check really quick, which is at jointhepartypod.com slash merch. Dope. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was such a delight. And for now, I'm going to throw it over to me in the future so that he can wrap up with the show. Take it, future me. Thanks, past me. And thanks again to Eric for coming on the show. Oh my gosh, I'm just going to sit for a minute and think about how much fun I had with that game and how perfectly it told the story that I wanted to tell with it, because I I really love football stories, and I really love high school football stories, and I really love teenage coming-of-age stories, and this game just did all of those so, so very, very well that like I was just blown away by how much I enjoyed it. It was an absolute, absolute delight. I cannot recommend enough that you go to the show notes, you download Clear Eyes, Full Hearts. It was great. I loved it. It was awesome. I'm going to stop gushing now and actually, like, finish the show. Um, you can also be sure to follow Eric on Twitter at El Silvero. Then, while you're on Twitter, follow us at Party of One Pod. Like the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash partyofonepodcast. 
Head to bit.ly slash party of one discord to join our discord community, bit.ly slash party of one merch to head to our merch store. If you enjoy the show, consider leaving us nice iTunes or Podchaser review. Those are two of the main websites that, like, send the thing to my inbox, so I prefer those. Um, you can also support the show financially and hear some more audio of Eric and I talking about the World of Actual Play podcasts at patreon.com slash jeffstormer. Or you can also support the other podcast that I produce every week, All My Fantasy Children, which is a tabletop-inspired character creation, storytelling, and world-building podcast on the One Shot Podcast Network in which every week, my best friend Aaron Catano Saez and I take a listener-submitted prompt, we spin it into an original fantasy character, and we populate a shared universe one story at a time. New episodes drop every Friday-ish at oneshotpodcast.com. And I think that's I think that's all the things that we plug here. So, uh, Party of One is produced and edited, as always, by Jeff Stormer and Jen Frank. All music for the show comes from the song Infinite Lives by Megaran, featuring the D&D Sluggers. And the Party of One logo is by Evan Rowland. If you'd like to inquire about advertising rates, press coverage of the show, or coming on as a guest, you can email me at partyofonepodcast at gmail.com. And that's it. So until next time, thank you so much for listening. Remember to fight the forces of fascism every single day. Remember that self-love and self-care are radical and defiant acts of resistance. And as always, party on, everybody. Never